part of the National Defense Authorization Act that opponents claim would subject them to indefinite military detention for activities including news reporting and political activism. U.S. District Judge Catherine Forrest in Manhattan today ruled in favor of a group of writers and activists who sued President Obama, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, who claims the U.N. is our boss, and the Defense Department claiming the provision of the act signed into law December 31st puts them in fear that they could be arrested and held by U.S. armed forces. It was filed by New York Times reporter Christopher Hedges. Wow, this is really good news. Bound, I like this. Hell, we ought to just do the show live every night. We do it sometimes, and 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 for and then later have an edited version with graphics added. Maybe that's the answer. You know what I mean? Um, and again, I want to be here. I want to be here for ten hours. I told my wife I'm going to be home early. I'm going to shoot the news early. She goes, I bought some mahi mahi at the store. It's going to be ready for you. I called her after shooting most of the news at like six fifty. I said, Oh, baby, I'll be late. You know, the kids will be in bed by the time we get home, but that's okay. And again, it's not that. It's just that my kids are getting big, and, and I never even see them. But I got to fight the tyranny, or there won't be a future for them. By the way, whenever we do these live parts, we always cut it out. Let's just upload this with a full show tonight. You know, after we stream it live, I want to make sure we just put this whole show up. You know what? It's good. It's good. There's so many of these live shows people never even see, except for the subscribers that see it first. All right, uh, let's go to Aaron's report that is so important and didn't get the attention it deserved last night. Then we'll go to the big... What is it, hour and 40 minute report? The Nightly News tonight, how long is this big kahuna? Hour and 40 minutes, okay, my, my dead reckoning. My good old boy guts got it right. All right, we're gonna go to this Aaron Dykes report, Bilderberg hacking uh, the 2012 election, and uh, then we'll uh, go to the full news transmission. But I respect the fact that tens of thousands of our subscribers at PrisonPlanet.tv are waiting every night right at 7. And, and most nights we get it on at 7, a lot of nights. The, they complain and say it's not that it comes on sometimes at 7.30 or 7.15. It's that we don't know. We're sitting there. We get friends over to watch it. We're working on that. We can't launch this on television until it's ready. We're trying. We're trying to hire the crew. We're trying to make the money. I don't even want to sit here and grub for the money to pay for all this. Just support us with your subscriptions. We're going to do it all. You've got my commitment that the news is going to have to be done by like 6.30 in the future. I mean, we're shooting it right up to 7. So we then just run into this. But sad issue, that's a report to you. Bilderberg's very exciting. It's in deep trouble this year. Citizen Air Force drones are going to be dealing with them, covering what's really happening. Cover down on the radio today. Here's Aaron Dykes on Bilderberg hacking the 2012 elections. Call it Facebook's hacking them as well. Here it is. We are back on the InfoWars Nightly News, and now for a little technology news. First, scientists have built a billion-dollar city where no one will live. It's in New Mexico, and it's basically a smart city for research scientists to look at things from intelligent traffic systems to next-generation wireless networks to automated washing machines, self-flushing toilets, and on and on. And you've heard about how they're going to use toasters to spy on you, your own television to spy on you. They're already using GPS and your car's black box technology to spy on you. Cell phones are basically basically spy tools, double-edged swords, of course, though. And all this is just going to be further tested in a city that's set to look like something out of the Jetsons, but with even fewer people in it. That's interesting. Also, a light-powered bionic eye has been invented to help restore sight. These are some of the good things they could use technology before, but, of course, control is usually at the top of their list. Retinal implants stimulate nerves in the back of the eye, which has helped some patients to see. Early results of a trial in the U.K. mean two men have gone from being totally blind to being able to perceive light and even some shapes. However, a fitting, fitting a chip behind the retina requires a battery fitted behind the ear and a cable to join the two together. I'm sure they're looking at ways to eliminate that hang-up. Uh, also, in Detroit, not really a technology news, but an anti-gun news, a worker in Wayne County simply found a gun in the yard they were working at. It turned out to be stolen, and he's the one who got in trouble and fired from his job because... The job didn't have a policy on what to do if he found a gun. They had a policy about not bringing guns, but this was totally different. In an area that's almost totally disarmed, they've got a victim 
victim freakout mode, I guess. And even if there's murders in Detroit and Wayne County, you can't expect the police to show up for hours, sometimes not till the next day. They've really got things backwards there. No wonder it's leading, really, the country for falling apart economically. But back to the Bilderberg topic, increasingly all the things we see on the internet, the positive sides of the revolution, the attempts to crack down, all seem to be spiraling around the group of elites that meet each year in a new location under their secret names in fancy five-star hotels. And it's part of, we see more and more, a larger web of control through groups like Facebook and other big tech people. So many of them have started attending this conference and kind of nexusing with that we have the article today from our contributor am freyed liars or genius gaga zuckerberg and obama groom from childhood for their roles and this is all on the heels of facebook launching its ipo this week they are estimating they're going to be valued at over a hundred billion dollars lady gaga went to geek camp too Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, Google's Sergey Brin are all alumni of the Center for Talented Youth at John Hopkins University. Similar programs also take place, such as the Duke Talent Identification Program and others. It's kind of a mix of people with gifts for mathematical, musical, technical things, and people who just have important elite family members and how they prepare them for their role in the New World Order. In particular, this is interesting with Zuckerberg. Am Freyad writes, it's likely these are all lies of sorts. Zuckerberg is no genius mogul, and Facebook is more a U.S. intelligence asset than a functioning business. It's a simple formula. The power, the power elite that wants to run the world has increasingly integrated a seamless network of testing throughout the web to help develop and identify top human youngsters, those who are symbolically facile, even verbally adept, without the additional burden of deep thinking. That's right, they want to control their little pet geniuses. It's a kind of organized crime approach to the cultivating of talent. After making their selections, elite handlers begin to make the pitch. The quid pro quo is surely obvious, and monarch programs and other forms of mind control are not necessary. Most, like Zuckerberg, acquiesce willingly and do whatever is required. Of course, many of these young people mature late in mathematics capability is not the only kind of creativity they hold. This is not an issue of, to the top elites. They apparently wish to select for numerical facilities, music, language, math skills, because the owners of such talents are more likely to be linear in their thought rather than holistic thinkers. The idea is to present geniuses with outward dazzling skills, but little in the way of insight or determination to investigate the realities of the larger picture. And that larger picture is coming together when you begin to study who who is it that attends the Bilderberg meeting? What is their agenda? What are their related agendas? What are their conflicts of interest? We're going to get into some of that today. And throughout it, they're going to be revealing just some of the technical people who've attended Bilderberg just over the past few years. Bill Gates, probably the most notable, the already most deeply steeped in evil but others are being brought onto this platform. And what really is at Bilderberg, just the larger cartel, that's really what they are. There's the one company, they include the NSA, they include the CIA, they include all the political fronts, and they control a great deal of the industry, the technical stuff, and a whole lot more. Now, we've heard this week about how a judge refuses to reveal the ties between the NSA and Google. We're not supposed to know that they're spying on us or that they're working together or that Google was basically launched as a front for the NSA, CIA, and related interests. But that's all coming out. And you see Eric Schmidt attending annually at Bilderberg. He got confronted last year. And it's kind of funny, too. He thought that people wouldn't know how to speak English just because they're in Europe, but they did. He got shouted at. He didn't like it. They even had some of the videos pulled from YouTube of people confronting Eric Schmidt and the other Bilderberg attendees who got caught walking down the sidewalk. Very interesting. But back to Facebook, this week they're in the news, of course, because the IPO is about to happen. They're about to uh, be declared as a $100 billion company, really topping anything Bill Gates did or any of these other newfound billionaires because it's part of that larger myth of wealth. Those who have the wealth are supposedly in control. Therefore, they associate with the elite. Therefore, they pull the strings. Therefore, it's not surprising to find them influencing this and that in social media and online and our new reality, what's considered the mainstream culture they're always trying to sell. And so you see Eduardo Saverin, 
wanting to leave the country, wanting to renounce his citizenship, but of course cash in on that IPO. Now, this guy, Eduardo Saverin, was the initial funder for Facebook when it was only tens of thousands of dollars. He was at Harvard, uh, ran with Zuckerberg and the other founders who were all roommates there, but they didn't really like his style and they tried to push him out of the company and snag some of his uh, different holdings, but he got it back through a lawsuit and now he has the money. But there's an interesting clip I want to play here from the movie The Social Network that'll tie us to our main focus in this piece, which is Sean Parker, the first president of Facebook, also the first launcher of Napster, which disrupted the web, and someone who looks to be an overall agent of disruption. Let's roll that clip right now. A million dollars isn't cool. You know what's cool? You? A billion dollars. So a billion dollars, that's what's cool when Eduardo Severin wanted to sell off the company for a little over a million. Uh, people like Sean Parker convinced them to keep going forward and try to make Facebook a truly huge company. Now the real truth is these people are just fronts for larger entities. We've seen in the past how the Rockefeller Corporation and other big entities had to break up Standard Oil, had to break up AT&T, had to break up IBM, and other true monopolies of the early part of the 20th century century. They spun them, sold them, put them inside companies, but it turned out that all along control was basically with the same important people. And you see at the same time how John D. Rockefeller was himself an icon for that Robert Barron wealth of the early part of the 20th century. In the 21st century, in the rise of technology and the takeover of operating systems, Bill Gates was a major icon for that. And you see how much he has pushed the New World Order agenda himself, meeting very often at Bilderberg meetings along with his father and his wife and other counterparts of Microsoft and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But now that too has to grow. Uh, companies like Facebook have to transplant the success of Microsoft. They have to top what's already been done. So now it has to be a hundred billion dollar company. What does that money really mean? What's it based in? It doesn't matter, but they're going to be selling these new Silicon Valley figures as our saviors, as the rightful elites to control things. And that's why you see people like Sean Parker, the founders, including Zuckerberg of Facebook being glorified, movies made about them. Again, you just saw the clip from the social network where he says a million isn't cool, a billion, that's what's cool. But actually, he said a billion dollars isn't cool. Sean Parker, a billion dollars isn't cool in the Huffington Post. One of the film's sequences involves, a, involves the Parker character telling the young Facebook co-founders a million dollars isn't cool, you know it's cool, a billion dollars. The real life Parker has a different take on wealth. It's not cool, he said, of a billion dollars. I think being a wealthy member of the establishment is the antithesis of cool. He added, saying being a counterculture revolutionary is cool. So the extent that you're made a billion dollars, you've probably become uncool. Well, Sean Parker, you've become uncool. We have you on video attending Bilderberg in 2010, giving the victory sign, so cool, like a billion dollars cool. Uh, Alex found out when I was telling him about some of the research that I do every year on Bilderberg, looking up members from the attendees list, finding out what they're up to lately, and he realized he met Sean Parker just a few months ago at a party during the South by Southwest meeting, and how crazy he was, how strange, and seemed hype up on something. We don't know what was going on. He was juggling apples and talking intently in people's faces and acting real weird, and a bunch of hangers-on were gloating about his billions and how he was about to cash in for even more when the IPO of Facebook went through. And it's just all very strange, the worship around this guy who didn't like his portrayal in the social network as a drug-induced playboy who's kind of wielding these new technologies. And yet, when Alex met him at the party, it really